Okay, so there's something I just want to say right out of the gate here. And that is that, I mean, I'm at the moment, I'm running on my old laptop. I'm running KDE Neon in the background. And we're looking at Linux Mint 19.2 beta. But I want to show you this. This is ridiculous in my mind. Linux Mint 19.2 beta cinnamon is more performant inside VMware or VirtualBox, pick your poison, then KDE Neon is on the outside. Like, I'm not even kidding. The frame rate of animations, you might not be able to see this in an recording because it's only 25 frames a second, whatever, but the animations and the frame rate is actually smoother inside a virtual machine than the host machine that it's on. Yes, my laptop's getting old, whatever. Okay, let's get on with the real thing. Linux Mint 19.2 beta review slash first impressions. Let's get into it. All right, so Linux Mint 19.2 beta. Uh, we have got a few things to talk about, but I think the name that needs to be handed straight away to this release is refinement and performance. Honestly, I feel like we've been tooting that horn for a while in the Linux Mint camp. This is the stuff that's kind of boring. It doesn't make fantastically interesting release notes, but what it does make is a really well-refined uh, operating system. And honestly, if there is at least one distro in the Linux world that's doing that, I'm more than happy for Linux Mint to be that distro. Okay, so there's a bunch of different flavors that you can go and try out. Obviously, it's a, still a beta release, so none of this is final. I'm not going to be giving a final verdict on this, but the world is interested in what Linux Mint has to offer. So I am too, and I'm going to go and check it out, same as everyone else. Uh, now, the main things that have been added, and I guess apart from just more up-to-date desktop environments, obviously, let's talk about Cinnamon. Because if, if you guys have been following Linux Mint for a while, you know that Cinnamon is uh, the baby that belongs to Linux Mint. And or it doesn't belong to them. They just work a lot on it. And they're very invested in making it succeed. Uh, now, with this last release cycle between 19.1 and 19.2, there, uh, there was a little bit of turbulence along the way of trying to just nut out some of the performance issues with Muffin, the window manager. The Muffin Man. The modern man. To try and make the desktop feel smoother. And, uh, and so I'm just going to skip down to the section of the release notes that talks about it. Um, so it, uh, it talks about the fact that uh, they've done a lot of work on the Muffin Window Manager. The Muffin Man? The Muffin Man! And they've tried to uh, make the distro feel a lot lighter, smoother, be able to redraw quicker and all of that kind of stuff. Um, they've also given the uh, the ability to switch VSync on or off. It now no longer requires you to restart Cinnamon. So in general preferences, you can now jump in there and turn that on or off, depending on uh, obviously what's going to work well for you and your graphics card setup. Also, is it just me or have Linux Mint switched to the Ubuntu font as a default? Is that just something they've done recently or I'm just blind? Either way, I will comment very briefly on the look and feel in that it's looking minty fresh as always, but I do like the fact that they've tweaked the contrast significantly of uh, of the Mint Y theme, just to make it a lot more, uh, make the the headers and the fonts and all that stuff pop a lot better. And, uh, and I notice it, like the fonts look a lot clearer. Everything kind of jumps off the screen a lot better. And the real punchy contrasty look uh, makes Mint uh, seem cleaner in its design. It sounds weird, but um, they've kind of highlighted it here with a transmission uh, screenshot or a series of screenshots where they show you what the faded one looks like versus uh, sort of the enriched, kind of more saturated, a little bit more contrasty version that they're bringing in with uh, 19.2 or the Cinnamon 4.2. Um, so under the hood, there's not a whole lot of stuff that's being changed here in terms of what Linux kernel it runs and all that kind of thing. However, uh, because at the end of the day, this is based on Ubuntu uh, LTS. However, they, ha they continue to add these little bits and pieces to things like uh, the update manager and the kernel updater so that you can uh, not only just set automatic updates for them to just kind of tick away in the background without you even having to worry about it or trigger things, which I think is pretty cool, uh, but they've also given you a few more options with their kernel manager in that in, with Linux Mint 19, they, were, um, they gave you the ability to jump between different kernels 
and, uh, and to be able to um, use the one that works best for you, whether you want to use the LTS release, a really current kernel or a kind of a middle ground. And uh, not only do they give you like a, a bunch of really great information about each kernel, which one you might want to use and why, uh, they now will tell you how long that kernel is going to be supported. Um, and so you can make a more informed decision based on whether you want more up-to-date features or whether you want something that's more stable and will be supported for a long time. And honestly, as a desktop Linux user, that's the kind of stuff that you want to be stupid simple. Um, so uh, they've got uh, the ability just to be able to install and remove kernels at will. And, uh, and they also, like I mentioned, have uh, given you the ability to automate updates, but at the same time, blacklist the things that you don't want updated. Um, so again, whether that wreaks havoc on your system or not, um, the fact that the update manager will prompt you to set up system snapshots when you first launch it anyway is, uh, is a stroke of genius. And, uh, and honestly, everything about the way that Linux Mint handles updates, system management, and app installation is really, really fresh in my mind. It gives you the best of what Linux has to offer with some fail safes in place so that uh, you don't screw it up. So of course I want to switch to a local mirror and of course I would like to set up uh, system snapshots. These are the kinds of things that new Linux users should be doing. And the fact that Linux Mint is uh, is pushing forward kind of best practices when it comes to managing a, a Linux desktop is, uh, is excellent. I love it. So I'm just going to choose a mirror real quick that I know works for me. And uh, there we go. I am now running on some nice speedy mirrors. Also, it is worth mentioning that, uh, that of course, Cinnamon has the welcome screen that's still available that gives you uh, quick links to documentation, uh, first steps like installing apps, installing, uh, installing any uh, drivers that you might need, all that kind of thing, switching between desktop layouts. And, uh, and this is all available to you, same as it was before. Let's talk about some other stuff that is unique to 19.2. One tiny little tweak that I really appreciate that they've made is that in the menus, uh, now if you have two different versions of a piece of software installed, let's say for example, with the fact that the software manager has Flatpak support built right into the software manager, it's really cool now that they will actually uh, delineate uh, which application is installed from the native repos and which one are, are installed from a flat pack. And then also the same goes if you've got like multiple generic uh, applications, whether they're text editors or file managers, it'll actually delineate which ones are different. Um, so again, it trends on the side of uh, naming the application based on what it does. For example, text editor, um, instead of giving it the dumb name like gedit, uh, but it will it will delineate the difference between the two by putting the title of the application in parentheses next to it. It's a tiny little tweak, but again, it just kind of makes things a little bit more usable, a little bit more approachable for new users. Uh, and and of course, as per stock standard, we do have a new volley of uh, delicious wallpapers and uh, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, and it looks like they chuck in all of the other ones as well, which is kind of nice. All right, let's jump into Nemo really quick because there are a couple of good tweaks that I love here. The, the number one feature, this sounds really dumb, but the number one feature that I am most excited about with Linux Mint 19.2 in general and is making me seriously think about it is the ability to pin folders and documents. This sounds really dumb, but I use pinned stuff all the time. Uh, and on Mac OS, I use tags actually a fair bit. And on uh, Windows, I do use the pin thing in the recent uh, in the recent files when I need to use Windows, which isn't that often nowadays. Um, and uh, and on elementary, I, I use the uh, the colored folders thing. I need visual representations of the files and folders that I use most often. And um, because like when you're dealing with a lot of files and folders, and I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this, you want to be able to get to the ones that you use the most really quickly and being confronted with a big list, even if you do use different folder colors and all that kind of thing, it's just another way that you can do it. So not only does Cinnamon allow you, uh, or the um, Nemo file manager allow you to choose different folder colors, but now it'll actually allow you to pin that folder right to the top of the list so you can just get there as soon as it's important to you. And, uh, and again, if you then wanna sort things alphabetically or whatever, it will obey whatever you tell it to do um, and you can simply just unpin it if you want to see it in its regular order, which, uh, which I think is pretty cool. I've got some improved stuff with Samba sharing. So if you're wanting to share folders over a sort of a Windows based network, you can do that pretty easily. They have tweaked a few things under the hood regarding the login, logout and display manager associated with that. And they've also got natural scrolling available for mouse, uh, which was great because before they only had it for trackpads. 
and they've got recent documents available. So if, again, if you want to jump back to recent documents, you can use that if you like. Okay, so you might be asking, when's this thing coming out? When is it final? Don't know. It'll be final when it's done and, uh, and when the Mint team are happy with it. But from what I can see, we've got a lot of good stuff here to be excited about. If you're already a Mint user, you're going to get this eventually anyway, so no need to rush out and go crazy about it. Uh, if you are not a Linux Mint user and you've been thinking about it, uh, then go and check this out, kick the tires, see what you think. I think it's already remarkably stable um, and I haven't had a single crash or issue in the, in the short time that I've been playing around with it. Um, but again, it is a beta, so bear that in mind. Um, honestly, there's not much more I want to talk about at this point. So this will be a short one, but I thought I may as well uh, weigh in and share my thoughts on it. Honestly, the work that Linux Mint continues to put out is so impressive and inspirational to me uh, that just the level of polish goes layers deep at this point. And uh, not only will you be impressed by what you see with Linux Mint, but you'll be impressed with what you get over the long run. Everything that Mint sets up from the start when it comes to uh, updating practices, backup practices, system snapshots, all of this stuff, kernel management, driver management, it's all stuff that just makes such a smooth path for anyone wanting to enjoy desktop Linux for themselves. And the fact that it's all backed on a relatively stable package uh, means that there, it'll be a great system uh, for the years to come until support, I guess, finishes up in 2023 for Linux Mint 19. Really good strategy. Well done Mint team. And I can't wait to see what the final release looks like. I'll see you all in the very next video. I'm actually gonna be doing a quick uh, comparison series about the world of Mandriva based distributions. For any of you who remember what Mandriva was like back in the day, it was one of the first distributions that I played around with. It was a big name not that long ago. And, uh, and nowadays we have three uh, um, distributions that are based off Mandriva. We have Rosa, we have Magia, and we have PC Linux OS. Now, they're not all directly from Mandriva, but they kind of owe their heritage in that direction. So I'm gonna be doing a really quick um, comparison or jump into some of those projects. Let me know which one you think I should tackle first in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you all in the next one. Peace out.